No, no. Go play. Go play. I'm doing a video. Go play. Mm. Go play, buddy. Yeah. You're fine. <coughs> hey, guys. Uh, Jason I'm here, and I'm going to do a little bit of a tabletop video. And got this neat, gigantic mouse pad that I just love. Looks great and dirty, too. So I am a slob. So, let me just sit up here. Uh, what I wanted to do is a bit of a video. Um, uh, about uh, knives for camping. And I've been having trouble trying to do this video because I'm not sure how to really go about it and narrate it and discuss it really. So it's, it's just uh, a mess in my head and I'm going to try and formalize it here for you. Buddy, what's the matter? What? Okay, he's going to be a distraction. I'll be right back. Okay, I kicked Buddy outside. <laughs> I'm give him a little bit of catnip out there too. Okay, so... Okay, getting this sorted out here. Uh, so, with when it comes to knives, you know, one knife uh, won't do uh won't do all the jobs you need you know the right knives for the right jobs and the way i've been able to kind of uh sort things out here is i got three basic sizes and small medium and large so <laughs> as simple as uh, as i can make it through small medium and large and then they're all going to do different chores for you when out camping, so uh, so we'll start with the uh, the small ones here. So small knives, um, and oh, this is a uh, this is discussing knives are not uh, um, they don't have uh, oh my brain 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 work <coughs> uh, they don't have dedicated uses or in or uh, jobs. I'm talking like the talking about the, uh, the knives you'd bring with your mess kit uh, for you know processing uh, potatoes and, and cutting up stuff for cooking and eating. I mean, I'm not that that's uh, not what I'm talking about. These are like general purpose utility knives uh, that you, you want to collect for camping and bring with you. And so I, I've been able to figure out about three different size categories that'll do uh, different jobs here. And let me get into it here. So, <clears throat> so you got your small knives, and these are probably your thinnest bladed. You got my dad's pocket knife here for show and tell. You know, and, and this, you know, it could be anything from pocket knives like this or the uh, open nail brand that <clears throat> that I've really come to enjoy. Um, here's a number nine here. You got two of these. Uh, this is stainless steel and this is carbon. So I'm gonna use this stainless steel one uh, when uh, working on uh, stuff like uh, food, you know, meats and vegetables and stuff. But this one is this could be a general utility one. I'm gonna allow it to rust and stuff. So yeah. So with small knives, uh, especially like with this one, you know, it's a very thin blade here, and. Um, with the open nails, which I am really surprised by, and you now this is just what I got right now. I don't have much of a collection or anything really. This is what I got right now, and what I could use for demonstration purposes here. <clears throat> but with uh, you now this thing is remarkably sharp. I mean, the blade itself it doesn't have a second bevel like you see here. You know that second angle then to the sharp edge. I mean, this thing, this literally, the meat of it literally just tapers, this tapers to a sharp point, and you, you only have to brush on it with a whetstone, and it's already razor sharp, and they're all like that. I mean, these are incredible. Gabby, you really have to use a litter box right now? Come on. Come on, girl. So, these are wonderful little knives, and these are great for, you know, really fine work if you want to make feather sticks or uh, you need to car carve notches and stuff really small into a, a piece of wood for stuff and uh, just really good all around small utility 
Um, don't expect them to be too strong. I mean, they are good steel, but when it comes to small knives, you know, you don't want to put too much, uh, you know, stress on them uh, this way. You know, you will snap them. <laughs> so, but good all-around knives, and they, I, I don't know about the serrated types. Has anybody ever really ever found that useful? I don't know. I don't know, guys. But anyway, so the small knives, uh, again, you know, small crafts like wood carving, uh, food preparation, uh, and just general utility, you know, general pocket knife utility, really. So that's what we got here. So, you know, I'm just going to leave these. This blade. This blade. If you don't know about these, these are really neat. They have a locking collar right here. I can show it to you. <laughs> you can lock open or close. It's got, they got it's got a notch on both ends of the collar here, right there and right there. So, yeah. so that's really cool. I really like these. So I'll put these back over here for display. <coughs> Alright, so moving on to the medium sized knives, and this is kind of all I got right now. Uh, I don't have anything like a bush knife or anything longer, well, except for this, but this is the large knife area. I'll get into that in a little while. So, Alright, so what I do have here are the, a couple of more knives. And I have this. Um, it's got a French trade knife. I found it on a, a website a long time ago, and man, I just really dig its, it's look. <laughs> it's really do. I think it's neat. And this thing is a beast. It's thick as fuck. I did a review video on this a long time ago, and I probably lost the video. But it is really good. Of course, I have to. I've been, I'm in the process of reprofiling this, so it's more like uh, uh, these guys, or at least these guys, with the uh, second angle there. So, because I, I do have a second be uh, uh, bevel here that goes to the edge, and uh, I'm trying to work that out and trying to bring it all the way back to here. So it's an ongoing process. And it is high carbon steel. So it's already been pitted and stuff and used. But man, it is nice. <laughs> it is thick. God damn. <laughs> oh, man. So, anyway, uh, these will. Uh, fill a bill here. Um, so with large knives, um, or sorry, medium category knives, you, know, you want them thick in the, in the spine in the least, you know, you know, somewhere around there. And I got two different moras because uh, this one's a utility, a general utility. It's going to do rougher chores, like uh, if I need to baton wood or something, you know, it'll do it better. And it's general, you know, harder rolls that are more, be, uh, more uh, abusive on it. And you can see that of the two, um, you know, this one's got a thicker spine. It's got more meat in the blade. It's just generally thicker, and it is a bit longer. And this one, see how they're both stainless? Yeah, they're both stainless. And this one, um, I figured if anything, um, like a shorter one that I could, I could probably use for food processing, cutting vegetables, carrots, potatoes, and stuff like that, because it's got a beefy secure handle and stuff um, you know, I, I don't know, I just thought I should get it basically <laughs> I mean, yeah, I do have that and they're about the same size but if I can't find this one or whatever then I got a backup main, you know, large one here but this is definitely a larger blade and stuff so it's not going to do the same chores as this you know, but this, these kind of knives will fill that roll that medium sized knife where you just need it so, unlike this one here, so, <laughs> yeah, so you could, uh, you know, use it on f uh, fell rods, uh, I'm trying to think of stuff you can do, <laughs> my mind's going blank, eh, it's typical me, but yeah, uh, so you get the idea with these here, so, so you want to get, get a couple, of, um, I, I don't have like a natural bushcraft knife or anything like that, um, because uh, uh, for a good one, well, actually, uh, yeah, for a good one, they have to be hand forged, and they cost like two, three hundred dollars. 
So screw it. I'll, I'll just get a Mora knife that works just like a $60 knife, but I paid $15 for it. And these monsters are sharp too, so watch out. And I come with these uh, plastic scabbards, which look like crap at first, but they're actually really nice. Some of them even have uh, these holes. Um, yeah, like, uh, you can probably put that on there. Probably, probably not one of that type, but you can actually stack them like that in some ways. So, at least with this one, you can. So, yeah. So the scab, the, the sheaves on these are really nice, and don't forget the the, the thumb groove right here, so like that. So that goes there, that goes there. Okay, so small, mediums, and now my favorites, the large. <laughs> now <clears throat> I've done a, I've like ass beat out on large knives for a while, and I've uh, I found that the the kukri knife design is your best design for your camping large knife and this son of a bitch really is great when you uh, you want to take something with you that you can actually hack down a small you know, you know sapling of dead wood or something you know firewood processing you can taunt it down and you can you know and um, and also you can actually do some crafts with it We're using the inside of the blade here you can uh, kind of shave and debark and do all kinds of stuff with that and you know it's just a good utility knife and it's the, the way that the shape of the blade is it allows for a lot of force when chopping you know if you see that you know it puts all the weight and the kinetic energy right here the blade dips down and gives it a much better flow and uh, angle of attack and not only that but with this brand of kukuris, um, the handle is curved it's actually curved and which and it's really nice because it just helps it you know in the chopping action save strains on uh, the strain on your wrists and everything I don't know if I don't really know if you're supposed to just keep your wrist straight or not but I think you're supposed to bend it as you come in but um, I'm not sure <laughs> but that's what I like about cookies now I thought about do uh, collecting some like Bowie knives and uh, stuff like that but the problem is uh, they're original intended uses as a fighting knife, a dueling knife. They're not really meant for, you know, actual bushcraft or camping, really. Whereas this is, this is kind of like a little little machete that's uh, really thick and stuff. So, you know, it's pretty good. It's a lot better design than like a Bowie for your camp chores and stuff. So, that's just uh, what I want to put, the, put together there. Now, <clears throat> if you're wondering where I got this one, this is a Toro Blades Kukuri. This is the uh, basic service issued circa 1970. And I like Toro Blades Kukuri's way better because I have, I have shopped at the other two leading competitors. Most notoriously, Himalayan Imports. Now the problem with these is that they're just retardedly thick. I mean they are certified crowbars or pry bars and that's just not good. They, that is not good. I mean it looks badass. It feels badass. I'm still happy to have it but I'm not going to take it camping with me. It is just ridiculously overbuilt. Way too heavy. So that's my problem with it. Uh, Himalayan imports and the second competitor uh, down the list is a uh, <coughs> cookery house now they uh, I, uh, man they, they are the notorious tourist cookery makers and this is what I got and really it's just not at the par I mean I had to really work on that edge to, to get it sharp and um, you know it's just not good it's not as thick either but even compared to Taurus who's uh they take their designs and uh, uh, they uh, measure and weigh actual cookeries in museums and private collections you know actual original ones and then they replicate it to spec and I mean that just tells you right there you know you know this is again too heavy and too thick so <clears throat> both 
that and these stupid knives won't even stay in the damn sheath. So, you know. <laughs> damn, they're really just shit. They really are. So, so that's for the large knife area. Uh, if you want to get like a real good usable cookery, cookery um, get uh, Tora Blades. Because these two brands, the Himalayans and the Cooper House, are pretty much just tourist cookeries, and uh, they're just they're just bad design here. They you know too heavy, too thick. They're not as refined um, in the craftsmanship and stuff. It's just not good. Just not good. Though I do have to admit, I did test stress test this guy as hard as I could, and I I was I. Beat it to hell, and I couldn't get it, get any part of it loose. I thought the handle would get loose, but it didn't. So, yeah, that's why I still have it. Because I paid good money for it, and I don't like it. So, yeah. I forgot how heavy this son of a bitch is. Now, this one actually does have nicer, small knives to it, but they're still really primitive. And just not refined at all so so stay away from these guys get Tor blades if you want a real usable cookery and they don't make uh, just this one they make a whole bunch of different types um, <coughs> in general but if you want uh, don't like uh, the idea of having something so long maybe you can go and get yourself a regular bush knife that's uh, maybe a little uh, more than half the size of this one but it's really up to personal uh, taste, and I find that this one does a great job. I mean, this, well, not this one. I'm going to get another one with a wood handle. Called probably the uh, World War II Battalion for my hiking trips. Because, um, because this is my hatchet, and easily this is a lot heavier. A lot heavier. And if I want to go backpacking and stuff next year, I'm going to get me uh, a a cookery knife. Uh, well, not this one. I could take this one with me, but I'll, I want to get another one with, uh, for that. And leave this Bucko Laplander folding saw. So that would be a great addition to any camp kit. You know, instead of hacking, you can saw. It. <laughs> but just in case, you know, I'm going to pack both of these. Uh, I always bring both this cookery and. Uh, my axes and everything with me when I go camping, even though I never use them, and I like to know that I have them with me. But yeah, so I'm thinking for like if you're on a planning for a backpacking trip and you definitely want to, you process firewood and stuff, then um, <clears throat> definitely get a cookery. It'll fill the roll of a hatchet really easily. You can still baton the wood and split it, and you can also do shavings and stuff with it uh, with the, the rear part of the blade here. So that's a great knife to have, and also get yourself a good, good bar knife. Whew. All right, so I hope this made a whole lot of sense to you on what to consider collecting for your camp knives. <laughs> Man, I'm just I thought there was a period in my head of filleting like a monster fish of this thing, <laughs> like a big sturgeon or something. <laughs> Oh man, that'd be nuts, wouldn't it? I, I could probably do it. I mean, I've got it pretty sharp. But yeah, who knows? <laughs> so yeah. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where I bought this. Um, you gotta remember, um, they don't ship out, out right away. They make them in Nepal, the country of their origin, and they, sh they do them in batches, and then they wait till every one of them is sold on the, on the, line, on, on the online store, and then they mail it out which will take about three or four months so plan ahead when you want it delivered <laughs> so yeah okay uh, that is all I got for now and that's it that's pretty much it you got, your, you got three basic categories for different jobs and uh, ranges of uh, chores and stuff here so just maybe uh, I've uh, you know got you guys all learned <laughs> Okay, my brain is literally quitting on me. I'm going to move on and go to bed. I'll see you guys later. Like and subscribe.